it's much bigger than baseball. I think it's about, you know, what the troops are doing, you know, for us across seas. I think it's really important to, to honor them and, and the honor the sacrifices. My grandfather was in the military, so I know how it works. A couple of young kids with their dad, and like you said, eating hot dogs. Do I miss the barbecues at home? Of course. It's more of a, uh, a sentimental day. Hear the national anthem that day, you, you know you truly respect what's going on and what's been done. I was very honored to even run out with the little American flag I had last year. That I can do what I do because they're doing what they're doing. Baseball is American fast life. Fourth of July, everybody. We are set for holiday baseball from the O.Co. Coliseum. It's the Chicago Cubs, and it's the Oakland A's rubber game of the series. And what do you do on the 4th of July? Well, you tailgate, and then you head inside, and you hope for an Oakland A's victory. So holiday baseball coming up, A's Cubs. You're going to see it right here on Comcast Sportsnet, California. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Indeed, I hope you're having a great 4th of July. So Dan Straley gets the call today, Ray, and Straley went down. He was told to go down and try to straighten some things out, and he's now back, and he's going to make the start today for the Athletics. Kind of the odd man out, Kuyper, just because of three off days, it went to a four-man rotation. But the most important thing for Dan Straley is that he is back. If somebody else would have come up, I think it would have been unfair for him because he did bite the bullet and going down to AAA. But he knows that he needs a pitch, and uh, he wants to stay in the rotation. There's going to be some more off days with the All-Star break. But even though this might be, I wouldn't say a pressure situation for him, he needs to pitch well because he knows he can. He did it last year. He wants to continue to do it again this season. And for the Chicago Cubs, well, they're a team that can be dangerous offensively. And in this series, we've seen Alfonso Soriano. He's been around a long time, Ryan. I think there's a lot of teams who wish he would accept the trade because he could help some teams in a pennant race. I think we all think he should accept a trade because he has a lot to offer. He's a power hitter, as he has shown in this series. He does play left field, not gold glove, but serviceable. But he knows how to hit, especially with runners in scoring position, which he did against Cologne last night, early part of the game. He's a power hitter, very much wanted by a lot of clubs. And I think at a point in time in a guy's career, when he knows the club is not going to win, he should accept a trade, especially to a team that wants him and has a chance to win. All right, so you saw Dan Straley. He will be opposed by the lefty Travis Wood today. There's your pitching matchup, and it is also the rubber game in the series coming up from the O.co. Fourth of July baseball. Lineups at first pitch when we come back.
on Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Go big at a Jack in the Box near you with Jack's new Big Stack Burger. Fourth of July baseball from the O.Co. Coliseum. It is also the rubber game of the series between the A's and the Chicago Cubs. We certainly hope you're enjoying the holiday. Hope you enjoyed today's ball game. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. Another gorgeous day in the Bay Area. Not a cloud in the sky. Bright blue skies and 80 degrees. Probably the way weather is supposed to be on a holiday. A nice breeze. Yeah, nice breeze. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Chicago Cubs. Valbuena again in the leadoff spot. Then Castro, Scherholz, Soriano, Rizzo, Navarro, Bogusevic, Barney, and Castillo. Dan Straley happened to be back in the big leagues, happened to be back pitching for the athletics. And, of course, he was down at AAA. He said he gave him about six runs in his first start when he got back there. Wasn't happy, but he understood the situation. But most importantly, he is back and would like to continue to stay in this rotation the rest of the season. First pitch of the ball game is grounded foul. So we are underway. First pitch. He's won on Tuesday by a score of eight to seven. Cubs won last night behind Matt Garza by a score of three to one. So a good pitching matchup last night between Cologne and Garza. Unfortunately, Garza just a little bit better than Bartolo. Today it's Dan Straley and the left-hander Travis Wood. Matt Garza pitched last night like thinking Scott's going to look at me. I'm going to give my best and uh, pitch my best and he did for eight innings. And if you're a baseball decision maker for the Chicago Cubs you were probably rubbing your hands together <laughs> going oh yeah. Life is good. Price tag just went up. <laughs> High fly ball right field where Chris Young is out there today and he's got it. Valbuena is retired. So out number one here in the first. And this was the man right in the middle of all kinds of trade rumors. Matt Garza. Had a good fastball and I think very impressive for him kind of in the fact that in the early part one first time through the order he threw a lot of the sliders to get strikeouts especially if he fell behind three one three two. But then he went to the fastballs later. So he mixed his pitches knew exactly what he was doing. And probably the fact that he had faced the A's as a member of the Rays even though a lot of the players maybe didn't face him but. I, I think no matter who he's facing that's the way he's going to pitch. Here's Stalin Castro who takes the strike. He's come in with a record of 49 and 36 half game lead over the Rangers in the West. It's the second best record in the American League and tied for the fifth best record in all of the major leagues at 49 and 36 and they've won five out of their last seven at the athletics. Caps being worn around baseball. All players wearing a special 4th of July cap. Steve Bustinich, the A's equipment manager, clubhouse manager, had red, white, blue sleeves on today. I've seen a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. pretty sharp. He said anybody could wear them if wanted to, except for the pitchers. Matter of fact, Derek Norris has one on. That's, that's pretty neat. Curveball hung up there. Castro fouled it back. Notice Derek Norris. I know uh, Josh Reddick had the sleeve on. How about that? You know, that's dual purpose there. It looked great on 4th of July, but it also keeps warmth in your elbow. There's Josh Reddick on both arms. Cespedes to his left. He's under, and that's out number two. Let's take a quick look at the A's defense for this afternoon. Cespedes, Crisp, and Young in the outfield. Donaldson, Rosales, Lowry, Fryman on the infield. Derek Norris is the catcher. So you see the defense, but you also see the right-handed hitting lineup for the A's. Here's Nate Scherholz. Jam shot. Rosales grabs it in the air side. Retired. Three up, three down inning for Straley. And here comes Travis Wood to take on the Athletics.
first and let's look at the athletics lineup as they get set to come to bat. Coco Crisp lead it off, followed by Lowry Donaldson Cespedes, Fryman Young Norris, Smith and Rosales. Travis Wood, the lefty on the mound for the Cubs, and he is a lefty, and you know what that means. Sinker slider. Of course, uh, you throw a two and four seam fastball. He is making his first start in July, obviously. Five starts in June. He's on three, a couple of no decisions, but the one part of his game he'd like to have more, and that's run support. Not much in the three losses in the month of June. Behind Travis Wood, Soriano, Bogusevic, Sherholz in the outfield, Belbuena, Castro, Barney, Rizzo in the infield with Wellington Castillo doing the catching. So Coco Chris steps in, hitting from the right side against Travis Wood. First pitch is bunted toward first. Rizzo picks it up, steps on the bag quickly. And on one pitch, Coco Crisp is retired. If he gets Rizzo to take a step to his yeah. right, he probably beats it out. Yeah, ideally when a right hander is going to push the ball, watch it towards the shortstop, get it past the pitcher, or towards the second baseman, past the pitcher, and maybe get the first baseman to go after the ball. And foot race with Coco, he's going to win most of the time. So that'll bring up Lowry. So back to back switch hitters for the A's, at the top of their lineup. Three oh four for Jed Lowry, five home runs, 34 runs batted in. One for eight so far in the series, and one for 10 in his career against Wood. Looking at the starts this year for Travis Wood. You saw his ERA, which is very good, 2.85, but as Ray said, a little run support difficulty. That's why the record is only 5 and 6, but consistency was kind of the thing that jumped out. This one skied towards center. Bogusevic has it, and that's out number two. On the breakdown by month for Wood, very good in April. Good in May, and look at the ERA in June, but look at the record. And Ray, his starts this year, before today, three runs or less in 15 of 16 starts. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Exactly. His worst start was five earned runs in five and two thirds innings against the Reds, so he has been very good. And you give up 11 runs in five starts in June. And you don't win. Didn't get a win. <laughs> oh, and three and two no decisions. So it's so kind of a guy that you haven't heard a lot about, but pretty good left-handed pitcher, Travis Wood, only 26 years old. So Donaldson hitting in the third spot. First time he's done that in his career. You know, he was talking the other day, and you never know if Josh Donaldson is joking or serious, but he said, you know, the best hitter in the best hitter is supposed to hit third. So why am I not hitting third? So maybe enough people heard, but the type of season he is having, he deserves to hit wherever the skipper wants him, and especially in a position where if the guy's hot, you want him coming up in the first inning, and that's what Donaldson's doing. He hit in third. And I don't think there's any added pressure for him, regardless of where he's hit. Two and two now to Donaldson. Terrific season. 315 the average with 14 home runs, 55 RBIs. As he will find out this weekend if he's an all-star. Right. Saturday the announcements are made, is that correct? I believe so. Yeah. This one's hit toward right. Sherholz. He's got it. Side retired. So Travis Wood, just like Dan Straley, a three up, three down. First inning.
Today's game is brought to you by the Minions, flying the Despicable Imp and Universal's animated comedy, Despicable Me 2. It's in theaters now. Beautiful look at the O.Co. Coliseum with Oracle Arena right next door. That for uh, daughter Nikki and her husband and uh, grandkids, Matthew and they Joseph here? are here. And nice. you know, first thing Matthew said, Despicable 2. He said, can we watch it? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> he heard you. You can do anything you want. Yeah, and uh, uh, Nikki said, Dad, don't don't say it's hot when it's 86 to 88. Yeah, she does not 117 want to in Scottsdale, so that's. It feels like, I mean, it's warm again today, but maybe a little, there's a little more breeze today. And that seems to be helping a little bit. Well, the marine layer will be coming in by the time we get off the plane from Pittsburgh. It's probably going to be one. Fryman into foul territory. He's got the sunglasses on. Soriano is retired. And he didn't put up his arm saying he got it. No, nope, he had that one all the way. <laughs> didn't need to let anybody know. So one out for Anthony Rizzo. Also, what a great way to start this game. The national anthem and a lot of renditions, but Matthew Polanzani. He's pretty good. What an outstanding job he did in singing the national anthem. On America's birthday, what a great way to start the game. It's a good looking group right there. And they're about to go crazy. They just, somebody told him you're on TV. Just wave like crazy. Just, just be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying that to the kids, but I think the adult heard me as well. Two forty-seven. The average for Rizzo is. Looking for his first hit in this series. Dangerous hitter, but the A's have kept him quiet. Not close, and now it's a full count. Rizzo's a building block for the Cubs. Well, he's just 23 years old, 6'3, 240 pounds, lots of power. And he takes a walk. So that's the first base runner in the game, and it's a walk to Rizzo. Here's today's cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Best record in interleague this season. The A's are pretty much on that list every year. They've had a lot of success in the interleague. This year, 10 and 4, Cubs 11 and 5. Rays are nine and one. I mean, have to remember the interleague schedule will continue through the season. Normally, it ends about this time, and they get back to all of America League. But uh, the A's, of course, play Pittsburgh. They'll also go to Cincinnati. Cincinnati, yeah. uh, two games, and somebody will be playing the final weekend of the regular season the interleague game the series. I think we figure that's the Tigers, and that uh, Tigers and the uh, Marlins. Out of Florida. I want to say you're right that it was the Tigers that yeah. are going to be. Yeah, I think we, we looked at that a while back and realized that maybe a team in the American League would be playing in a National League park wouldn't be able to utilize the DH. Well, let's see. Hold on, let me I know check. you got all the sketches. I'll check for you, Ray. I'll check do that for my partner. The Tigers. See where the Tigers are the final weekend of the regular season. That's Detroit, right? That's, <laughs> that's the last time I checked. The Tigers were in Detroit. <laughs> yeah, you're right. At Miami is where the Tigers will end. And the way that division's going, they may not be able to use a DH. Uh, well, they won't be able to, but they may be needing to win those sure. those games. Victor Martinez, their everyday DH. Oh and two to Navarro with Rizzo at first. Yeah, that's on the inside corner. Strike three call. Well, it's a great pitch. You see Derek Norris move inside, and usually that's the case. Of course, he has a slider, does Dan Straley, but this is the two seamer bringing it back. Anytime you see the hitter raise his arms, he says, I have no chance, and he's praying that the two seamer does not break. Look at the rotation in X mode to see the rotation 
of the two seam fastball. It's like a screwball, but the two seamer that will freeze a hitter, a lefty in this case, the righty throwing it, and inside perfectly thrown. Expo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. Lots of sliders from Straley. That one a fastball on the outside corner to Brian Bogusevic. And that's the pitch. Of course, he walked Rizzo on a similar pitch, just missed off the plate. But he likes to use the outside with a tailing fastball. And of course, the inside we saw it to Navarro. Assortment of pitches, very deceptive with his delivery. That's why he gets a lot of strikeouts. Dave McKay, the first base coach, with the stopwatch for Rizzo. Tony Russo forever, Dave McKay was. How about this? You've got the biggest rival, one of the biggest rivals, the Cardinals of the Cubs. Uh -huh. Dave McKay, about 16 years with Tony Russo of the Cubs, are with the Cardinals, and guess where he goes? Chicago, of course. That <laughs> is good coach. He's been around for a long time. And Coach and with the A's, really back in the years that the A's were here, or Tony La Russa was here with the A's and then went on with Tony to St. Louis. Jamie Quirk, the bench coach who played for the A's. Well, I think what it tells you is a rivalry is probably more for the fans than oh, it yeah. is for the players and coaches. Swing and a miss. A couple strikeouts for Straley. So we're going to the bottom of the second inning. Cespedes is to lead it off. No score. Receive a MLB Network drawstring backpack and it's presented by MLB Network when the A's play the White and the Red Sox. For more information and tickets, go to OaklandAthletics.com slash tickets. Boston Red Sox, one trip to the Coliseum. The A's come back home and so one trip to Boston, one trip here by the Red Sox. So it's the bottom of the second inning. See the Brock no Bell? See the Brock Bell? Yeah. Need one of those. First pitch to Cespedes is outside. He'll be followed by Fryman and Young here in the bottom of the second against Travis Wood. So in between innings, highlights up on Diamond Vision. Highlights that not everybody can watch, quite frankly, but Joey Joey Chitwood. Chestnut, excuse me. San Jose's finest. Won the hot dog eating contest. 69 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Joey Chitwood is from the movie Hoosiers, Jimmy Chitwood. <laughs> so I'll get it straight. 
Six and a half dogs in 10 minutes. What's the calorie? 20,000 calories were <laughs> devoured in 10 minutes. So we hope he's okay. He's from San Jose. Congratulations, I guess. Well, it's his day. And normally it's the day of Pat Hughes, Cubs broadcaster in the booth next to us at San Jose's finest. Pat Hughes with the Brewers and then on to the Cubs for many years. He was with Bob Uecker. Okay. Left Uecker and went to the Cubs. And Ain't that many hot dogs in 10 minutes. And it's a record, right? It's a record that he sets just about every year. Two and two the count. Left center field, the vendor. That's a good way to do it. Getting some work into the suites. Inside and now it's three and two. Well, if a lefty has a good sinking fastball, which Wood does, then three and two after the fastball in might be seeing something outside. Big Nate Fryman waits. Opposite field hitting against the top of lefty that the A's are facing day is what you want to think about. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. 90 mile an hour fastball. So that's the first strikeout for Travis Wood. Castillo outside Nine corner nailed position. it perfectly in. Did the letter say this is the blunt Tommy Cam? That's right. In Exmo and fastball pushed him off the plate and then went outside and opening of the hips was suspicious. Couldn't reach it. That's why with his opposite field hitting has been very, very good. This homestand and against this lefty, you can think opposite field and pull something with a mistake inside part of the plate. So one out for Fryman. Fryman hits it hard. Barney knocks it down, scrambles after it, and Fryman's going to be aboard. Darwin Barney, who's a gold lover, almost made a terrific play, but that ball was hit very hard. And is a base hit. It should be. And the fielder has to leave his feet. Comes up with it. It's a tremendous play, but you can't penalize him if he does it. And Dave Fryman, we have seen this pretty regularly going to the opposite field. A high breaking ball. Look at the rotation on the slider. Left it up. And Nate Fryman took it to the opposite field. So there's your first hit in the game. Barney's a little hacked off. He probably feels like he should have made that play. Chris Young takes the strike in the outside corner. Young playing in right field today, 191 with eight home runs. So all those spectacular plays that Brandon Phillips makes for the Reds. Yeah. Does he get him a goal glove? That's a good call. Phillips seems like he makes them every day. <laughs> every day. Inside. I think Brandon Phillips puts a little extra flair on him oh, as well. Yeah. Barney playing right behind second base, pretty much. Inside, two and one. As the great Ron Washington would say, you can have the flair. But it's the routine that you want to make 100% of the time. And spectacular plays and those with flair will occur. Because you're very good, but you just need the routine plays made consistently. This time on the inside corner, it's called the strike. Well, this is one of two hit against Russell. That was uh, a solo shot. Donaldson got it for a two run home run. Surprisingly, it was a solo. He's hit four three run home runs this year. It's Chris Young. Two two pitch reached for. Well, that's 
part of what we've talked about, Ray, that even the guys with a low batting average, including Derek Norris, they have found ways to win games for the athletics. And Young is in that category. I said there'd be none bigger than the Jose Veras three run home run. Ninth inning, sure. Houston, the A's trailing. Last at bat and comes up with a big three run home run on a hanging curveball. And those are highlighted. Yeah, you can forget about I, I I take production and runs batted in, coming up with the big hits. Batting average is, is hard to maintain. You have to change your swing a lot of times to get hits. Especially if you're a certain type of hitter or playing every day, it's a little bit easier. Chris Young has not had that opportunity to play on a consistent basis, which he had prior to joining the A's. Don't you think? Kind of two different ways to look at it. You can get hits or you can do damage. And, and, and a and lot of times it goes hand in hand, yeah. but Yeah, those those hits at the right time exactly. can't do damage, but if you're getting hits and even even big hits are, are home runs. Sometimes they're hit whenever the score is out of whack. But you get the big hits, big home runs when your club is down. Josh Donaldson has proven that. But Chris Young, I mean he's hit eight home runs, he's driven in twenty eight, hitting under two hundred. But he has got some big hits. Way out in front of this one. So you figure for Chris Young, this is his 53rd game, 188 at bats. So if he was playing every day, just kind of do the math. A third of the 162 games are right around that. He's got 28 RBI. A lot of foul balls with a couple of strikes, and it continues to stay alive. Pitch out of the strike zone. The follow through. Did you get Castillo? Or? Well, Fryman at first, very short lead. Swing and a miss. So that battle is won by Travis Wood, who gets his second strikeout. Well, if the A's ever want to get to a bullpen, and a bat like that helps, it was 10 right, pitches. No Jenna Francesco because he didn't get on, but a great at bat. Seeing a lot of pitches. Added to the pitch count of this lefty and the hard slider down and in. That's called being fooled when you're out in front and you see the, the ball in X mode just float right by the bat. So Norris steps in, two outs. Norris hitting 203, four home runs, 18 RBIs. The numbers show that Travis Wood is not a pitcher that you're going to get a good jump and get a lead big enough to steal a base. Got a pretty good move to first base. Probably the type of pitcher that controls his own running game. Lefty can look at the base runner, lift the front leg, freeze him. He takes off, pick him off. Otherwise, keep him at first long enough to throw the, to the ball. Play. There's a note in the Cubs stat pack that he has allowed only 14 stolen bases in 470 big league innings. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't run. If you do, it's a hit and run. You hope the hitter makes contact. So there's that. Left-handed, kind of little hesitation, yeah. just a little bit. This year, three for four, so that's good, but very few attempts. Inside corner, and it's two and two. Well, it was a two-two change up from Russell, and Derek Norris reached out, hooked it to left center field, and over the 388 mark, a three-run home run. In the bottom of the eighth inning. And threw out a base run to the top of the ninth and a strike him out, throw him out, so you could say it was Derek Norris's night. In a game, if Feldman were still with the club, he wouldn't even start it. Yeah. 
The lefty was put in with Feldman being traded to Baltimore. So three and two, two outs. Fryman will be on the move. And that one's hit into the hole and into left field. Fryman stops. Two on, two out for Smith. Put the barrel on the ball and a cut fastball left it up Derek Norris stayed back and found the five and a half hole and that's just very good hitting by the A's catcher. He'll be happy going to Kansas City this weekend his family be over from Goddard Kansas. So he likes going to Kansas City. Yeah. We like Kansas City. He grew up in the Humidity, yeah. so he's familiar with it. First pitch to Smith in the first strike. 278 for Seth Smith with six home runs, 32 runs batted in. And a breaking ball in its own two. Is the DH this afternoon? He's the only lefty in the lineup, and the reason why Ray is lefties hit 122 against Travis Wood. And the two breaking pitches, Seth Smith just has seen already in this at back to tell why. You know, it's a beautiful sunny day. It kind of feels like Hyundai Sunday, doesn't it? Yeah. So you know what that means for Seth Smith. Travis Wood just doesn't know what he's about to see happen. O2 pitch in a nasty one, and it ends up two hits for the ace, three strikeouts for Wood. So the ace strand a pair. No score after two from the Coliseum. April 25th, 1976, a game at Dodger Stadium. Two protesters ran onto the field, tried to burn an American flag, and former Cub Rick Monday intercepted the protest by grabbing the flag. And ironically, Monday was traded to the Dodgers the very next season. And he is now a broadcaster for the Dodgers. So we thought that was a pretty good move by Rick Monday. 
Well, the thing that Rick Monday has always said since that happened, and it's, it's been many years ago, and great, great patriotic deed that he did, but he said had a pretty decent career, but the one thing he'll always be remembered for is saving the American flag. And, you know, you can have a career, but who cares? Because if you can save an American flag, that's something to be remembered for. Barney Castillo and Valbuena. Wonder what happened to those two guys. Well, fortunately, the first time as they tried to light the match, I don't think it would light. They couldn't get it started quickly enough, and it gave Rick Mundy a chance as they continue. But I think we hope we know what happens. Well, 30, so 37 years ago. Good breaking ball from Straley. So 0 and 2, Barney followed by Castillo and Valbuena. No score, top of the third. Cubs do not have a hit yet. One base runner, Rizzo, with one out walk in the second. Straley's last start for Sacramento was on Friday through 96 pitches against Reno, the Reno Aces. Slowly hit. Rosales has it. Guns it to first, and that's out number one. Well, you notice Dan Strelly clean shaven. He's looking at the numbers against Reno. Two earned runs of the six he gave up. I said, was this something you just want to do, shave? And he said, no, it's about 120. Hmm. Got itchy, and it was hot, so I shaved. But for Dan Straley, I'm sure very disappointing for him. As he was the odd man out with the off days, and the A's went to the four man rotation, but he is back and gets to wear the special A's cap as he did on Memorial Day, the camouflage cap that all players wore. So he has a special 4th of July cap today, in addition to the cap on Memorial Day. One and one to Wellington Castillo, the catcher. Close pitch. Steele had three RBIs on Tuesday night, couple of hits. Up inside and a good pitch by Straley hit the glove strike three call. Talk about hitting your wow. target. Well, and just enough downward movement on the pitch inside. Norris sets up inside perfectly All thrown right. to the location. And enough for Frank Gomez, the home plate umpire, to sit. So he's used the two seam fastball inside, getting Navarro strike him out, and a slider to Bogan base basic. And now this one. Ray, would you say that hitting the inside target, making that pitch is the hardest location yeah. pitch for a pitcher? Right on right to the yeah. side. Yeah. I, I agree. Because a lot of times guys are afraid to go in because if they think they're going to be close enough to hit mm -hmm. the hitter and they end up making a mistake. But I think if you're going to pitch inside, pitch off the plate. And that was two and two when he struck out Castillo, which if he misses, it goes to three and two, but he does have the option to go back out with a slider or two seam fastball outside. But I, I agree, some guys just cannot do it. Now, for him being a right handed throw in the lefty, it's probably easier because he can bring the two yeah. seamer in or run the cutter or slider inside. I know I've had pitching coaches tell me. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm talking about Kurt Young, but major league pitching coaches say some guys it's hard because, like you said, if they make a mistake too far and they hit the batter, if they make a mistake over the plate, the guy has a great yeah. pitch to hit. So there's two different areas where you can make a mistake. Probably more of the latter because right. I don't think there's as many hit. But but it's still in their mind, boy. Oh, if, yeah. if 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 I miss and it leaks back over the plate. Ryman has it, juggles a little bit, throws to Straley. 
And that's a three up through down inning. Five in a row retired by Dan Straley. Rosales is going to lead it off when we come back. Family Pack presented by Xfinity and co-sponsored by the Contra Costa Times. Every Friday home game, you can get four class level tickets, four Coliseum hot dogs, four medium Pepsis, and four bags of peanuts for just $50. Tickets are limited, so act fast. For more information and tickets, go to OaklandAthletics.com slash Friday. Always a good day. Friday Family Pack. Bottom of the third on a beautiful day at the ballpark as Rosales will lead it off, followed by Crispin Lowry against Travis Wood. Rosales pops a foul back. Last inning, he's got a couple of hits off Wood, but he struck out three. Nice for Adam Rosales and his family back in the Chicago area to be watching this game on the Cubs network. But Adam, of course, from the Chicago area. As we found out when he hit the big home run against the White Sox in the 10th inning to win the game and home cooked pancakes the next morning. Mm -hmm. He didn't share with us though, okay? He didn't bring any pancakes for us. Yeah, nothing like cold pancakes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could warm them up. You know. Nothing like pancakes in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Get enough hot syrup and butter? Come on, man. Foul back again. Never knew you to turn down food regardless of the condition. I prefer my pancakes hot. Outfield shifted toward right and shallow for Rosales. Rangers will play tonight. It will host the Seattle Mariners, and it'll be the Mariners who are going for the sweep. Iwakuma for Seattle. Martin Perez for the Texas Rangers. And he's with a half game lead over Texas. So Saunders, King Felix, and Iwakuma in that three game yeah. series against the Rangers. And Chuck Morgan is ahead of Diamond Vision. They always have big firework shows there on the 4th of July. Not surprised they're having a night game on America's birthday to have a big. Fireworks show at the Rangers Park in Arlington. Texas will host the Houston Astros this weekend, so Rangers will stay home. Plus, Cap is probably hot in Arlington, Texas today, so a night game is perfect. Drive to right, Sherhills coming in. He was playing shallow, he's got it, and that's out number one. Angels will also play tonight. A rubber game of that series between the Angels and the Cardinals. Angels four games under 500. Blanton and Wainwright, your matchup. 
The Angels will also stay home and they will host the Boston Red Sox this weekend. So that's a good series. The Red Sox winning again today, eight to two over the Padres in the ninth inning at Fenway. Red Sox just keep rolling along. Here's your West standings. The A's at 49 and 36. Coco fouls it straight back to even the count at one and one. I think it's nice that the Red Sox schedule a true day game on the 4th of July. Considering it's a getaway day for them to travel to the West Coast. Remember they had the four o'clock start local time for the A's whenever the A's were back there. Made a late arrival into the Bay Area. Yankees are beating the Twins nine to four in the eighth inning. The Yankees going for the four game sweep in Minnesota. So they'll try to wrap that one up. Hoko shoots one right side foul again. Hoko grounded out. Actually, he bunted to the first baseman Rizzo in the first inning. Sure holds on the move, and he's not going to get it. Drops foul. The difference for an outfielder if he sees grass, he might die for a ball if he's not approaching the side rail. But it's a lot of hard warning track, and really was getting on it very closely. Cheryl Holtz has excellent speed. They're playing Coco to hit the ball to right field, both center fielder and right fielder, shading with a very small gap in the right center. So what we're seeing is Wood pitching to the defense. Exactly. Not giving him anything inside, off speed to pull it. He hits a straightaway center. Could be a double. Goes inside this time. Makes a pretty good pitch. You see, he can do the thing that you're talking about, even though he's a lefty pitching inside to the righty, but he can get the ball yeah. down. Yep. And that's the key. Get it in far enough, but the only thing Coco could do is foul it back to stay alive. His catcher moved way, way off the plate. Now they're going back outside. And this one's driven to center. Rogasevic went back. Now he's got to hustle in. He gets to it, and that's out number two. So Lowry steps in. Now Lowry. Lowry hit a fly ball to center field. Driven that way again. And that is not Bogus Seven. We're going to tell you it's probably Julio Borbon. He caught the last two balls. <laughs> we'll get it straightened out. I, I didn't realize that because I had him in there.
July, everybody. Cubs and the Athletics wrapping up this series. Uh, that flag right there, high above Mount Davis. When it leaves here, it's headed to New York City Field for the All-Star Game. Each team will have a flag that was in their stadium, and it will be a sent to New York. Represent that flag right there, that American flag will represent the Oakland A's. And that's appropriate because every team has to be represented at the All-Star Games. So you have a flag and a player. That's right. One and zero to Castro. So did we find out who's in center field? And if it looked like Julio Borbon, and I've not heard why Brian Bogusevic left the game. He was batted in the second inning and struck out. Let's see if we get an announcement or. We can get somebody to go down there and check for us. Why is he saying straight up change? Three and one. That's good that you looked through the binoculars and recognized that that was or bone. It's pretty sharp. Yeah, right. And there's the walk. I'm still reeling from the. Joey Chestnut yeah. mistake. I'm gonna bounce back here, right? Lead off walk to Castro. Well, listen, absolutely. If you only see the Cubs once in 100 and some odd years, you know, so you're not familiar with the players. Whenever they do make a change, I was talking to Len Casper, who's the play-by-play -play TV voice for the Cubs, one of the good guys. He said, "All right, see you in." 17 years. <laughs> now, come on, we want to come to Wrigley before that. We want the Cubs to come back out here. First time the Cubs have ever played here. They'll actually see them probably at their former place in Arizona, which they're getting a new facility in Arizona. The A's will move to Mason to their, I don't even think, I think they're going to be in their new. Spring training like this uh, 14. Yeah, and I think they're going to take a one one year to renovate. Right. Whole camp, which yeah. is where the A's will go. So. So they'll see the Cubs, but it just won't be regular season yeah. for 17 years. So. I don't want anybody to think that the A's are just well, they're just moving into the Cubs old place. Well, no, it's <laughs> no. going to be fully renovated oh, and it's going to be beautiful. Runner goes the balls bounced to Fryman who took a look at second. So Scherholz is retired. Castro to second with one out. So the Cubs starting a runner, trying to get something going against Straley. Now batting number 12, Alfonso. And here's Soriano. I always thinks this. It's nice when a, a hitter makes an out on a hit and run. He gets high fives. I mean, essentially he's doing his job. He's mm -hmm. making contact, which that is the purpose of the hit and run. Make contact so it's not a swing and miss and a throw out of the base runner, but sure holds getting a chance to play the series while he's coming back to his home. Soriano takes a first pitch strike. He does not take a whole lot of first pitch strikes. He's usually up there to swing. Soriano popped out to first his first at bat and he rips one foul down the left field line. Well, there's that bat speed that Soriano certainly still has. That one was quite a ways inside and he still whips that bat through. And it's supposed to be outside. Of course, that's where he's hurt the A's in this series, pitches away from him. And especially with the, the slider that he barely makes contact in last night with a runner on second. Reached for and he stays alive. The ball bounces down in.
past the dugout of the Cubs rolls down the right field line a little ways. The length of the bat that Soriano uses, I don't know if a pitcher can really throw an, enough of a chase pitch to get him to chase the ball out of the strike zone. Soriano can cover the plate, cover beyond the plate with the long bat and his extension. And that's a base hit to left field. Starlin Castro was kind of half jogging. The throw to the plate is there, and he's out. I have absolutely no idea what Starlin Castro was doing. The old assumption, Ted, probably the assuming that base hit is going to score easily. Unbelievable. But forgot about the arm. Hanging slider. Soriano again comes through, but. They stop. Right they stop right there. He stop. is not running full yep. speed. And a perfect throw by Cespedes. Perfect tag by Derek Norris, getting him at the plate. And you, you don't run hard. This is what happens. He starts to run hard too late. And what a great tag after a tremendous throw. Look at the tag, the hard tag by Norris, pushing him off the plate as he tried to go around him. He got him. But the strong throw, the accurate throw by Cespedes, set the whole play up. So Soriano with the hit, Castro thrown out at home, and you know the, I don't get that. The, the only thing that maybe when he took off because it was a line drive, did he think momentarily that it's going to be caught? But it was sinking line drive. It's it's not like it well, was maybe. going to carry to him. But that's the only thing I could think of. But he, you know, you if that's the case, then maybe you stop. On your but own. He first, just yeah. took off slowly. See, can't quite tell there, but. He was running about 75% between second yeah. and third, and then you get thrown out by a bang bang play. Yeah, it, it was a bang bang play. You're right. Soriano runs, throw to second base, is in time. Have a day, Derek Norris. Wow. <laughs> Norris throws him out, side retired. Somehow the Cubs do not score. Not only does he tag, make a nice tag at home, and then he makes a perfect throw on Soriano. He had a pretty good job, but everything worked perfectly. Got rid of the ball quickly, and Adam Ozala is a very quick tag at second. Hey, Soriano. Soriano had a pretty good jump. Yes, yes he did. Yeah. And remember, he was a 40 40 at one time, so he the ability to steal bases. The patriotic sleeve of Derek Norris. He may wear that all the time. So Donaldson to lead it off. Still no score here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Opportunity for the Cubs, but Cespedes throws out Starlin Castro at the plate. 
What is it you say in a tight game, a pitcher's duel, the team that uh, makes a mistake or maybe capitalizes on mistake? Yep. A's no question. A's do it all the time. Yeah, and for some reason, and we will not know. Maybe he will tell later, but you know, with with two outs, maybe he breaks on contact without any hesitation. Mm -hmm. The fact there was one out, maybe that was enough that he hesitated. But like you said, stop. But stop on your own if, if you're going to do that. Now, your own assessment is a very strong arm. The accuracy has been in question at times, but this time a perfect one hop throw to Derek Norris. Fortunately, Donaldson did not cut it as he kind of went to the side, let the ball pass him, and right to Derek Norris, who had the plate blocked. Castro tried to go around him, pushed him off the plate. Two and one to Donaldson. Three and one to Donaldson. Suspense will be next and then Friday. Donaldson hit a fly ball to right field in the first inning. Two hits for the A's, one hit for the Cubs so far. There's not been an error in the game. Setting up inside, and it's ripped foul. Have to look at the throw, which had to be a good one, yeah. and it was. See how he transferred the ball. From his glove to his throwing hand, just kind of flipped it out. Really didn't go in and pull it out. But raw talent that, that and he had a horrible game last night in left field with the way the ball was sinking on him. And, and for him to come back this afternoon and make a perfect throw to the plate after last night. Maybe a step, and that's out number one. Here's our trivia question brought to you by AT&T. Who are the three play three players with the most leadoff home runs in Major League history? Most leadoff home runs in Major League history. If you think that you know the answer? Tweet us at, at CSN Athletics. And you can't say Ricky Henderson, so pick the other two. Yeah, that's not fair. You ask Ricky. He'll tell you exactly how many he knows, and it's a whole bunch. Ricky knows <laughs> how many home runs Ricky hit. That's right. And Ricky was batting. Me. <laughs> Cespedes struck out in the second inning. Is one for eight so far in this series. And there's a changeup and a good one. And a right over the top. And look just like his fastball. That's what makes it so good. Circle change with a little two seam action on it. That's what you want to see a power hitter do if you're a pitcher. Swing you're way out in front of an off speed pitch. A slider is inside. He's going to tease him inside like he did his last at bat. Tease him in, pitch him away. He's very good at throwing pitches off the plate and back it up inside. Guide behind home plate. Castillo is back, but he will not have a chance. Well, 
Two and two the count to Cespedes. Swing and a miss. Another off speed pitch, and Wood has a pretty good one. So that's four strikeouts. Two of them by Cespedes. Well, everything off speed. Anything that's close to the plate is off speed, and that's why Cespedes is way out in front. We saw Matt Garza last night through a lot of off speed pitches. He didn't make one mistake to Brandon Moss, get for a home run. Wood can be. Intimidating in a sense that he just frustrates him. Mm -hmm. May sound kind of generic, but what he really does is he just pitches. He's in and out. He's up and down. So we're seeing why he has a very good ERA. And pitchers like Travis Wood, you don't even look at the velocity of the no. fastball because it's a location, how he changes speeds. Actually, Dan Serena the same way. He'll alternate his fastball to and four seam, slider, curveball, changeup. Only though with lefties that you say they're crafty. Yeah. Very rarely say a crafty right hand. Maybe. A little over three runs per game run support. And that's why he's 11th most. Who are the other team? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and a line drive, and Wood grabbed it. So that's how the bottom of the fourth ends. So Freiman can't believe it. No score after four. Everywhere you go, available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At Bat delivers Oakland Athletics baseball with audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. You can text At Bat to 31826 or visit OaklandAthletics.com for details. Mount Diablo out our way, Ren. That's right. You had to take a shot in the offseason. You might see some snow yes, on the you top will. of Mount Diablo. But nice and dry now with all the heat. Triple digits out in Contra Costa yep. County. So it's the fifth inning. Cubs come to bat. It'll be Rizzo, Navarro, Borbone. Borisevic left the game with some hamstring tightness, so that is why Borbone is now in there. Rizzo walked in the second inning. Breaking ball for a strike. Lefty righty breakdown for Rizzo. Swing and a miss. Chase the high fastball. Strikeout number four for Stray.
up and down, in and out. Now intentionally going upstairs, but it worked out with the left-hander chasing the fastball. They see the release point just a little bit earlier than maybe what he wanted to do, but got away with it, and you'll take it. To bring up Navarro, the switch hitter. One to Navarro. And that one's ripped to right field. Young is there and he makes the catch. That's an off speed pitch, and that's why you like to see a, a power hitter out on the front foot. Because if he stayed back and got under a little bit, might have been a different story, but fooled just enough. Top spin, diving quickly, but caught by Chris Young. See, if you hadn't mentioned that Bourbon was in the outfield, see all the information now been given by Mike Selleck in the press box to Callahan, a public address announcer. Otherwise, Bourbon wouldn't even have been known that he's in the game. He's in the game, but he really wouldn't be in the game. Yeah. If Dick Allen doesn't announce it, then you're really not right. right. It's an 82. It looked like a split. A hanging split. One and one to Bourbon. Towards center. Coco's there. He's got it. Side retired. Three up, three down inning for Dan Straley. So, bottom of the fifth coming up. Everybody's in the house today. No score. Or who are the three players with the most leadoff home runs in Major League history? Of course, Ricky Henderson is first. Remember, Alfonso yeah. Soriano was for a long time a leadoff hitter. Yeah. And not just any regular <laughs> leadoff hitter. Biggio, 53 home run. But Soriano stole a lot of bases. One's already in the Hall of Fame, Ricky. Biggio should have made it this year. 3,000 plus hits. Didn't get in. As nobody did. Soriano remains to be seen. Young Norris and Smith here in the bottom of the fifth of a scoreless game. And 
Rays have two hits, both came in the second inning. Cubs have just one hit, and that was Soriano single in the fourth. And they expect Chris Young to pull the ball. I would say <laughs> yes, that is what they are thinking he's going to do, and he rips one to left field, but Soriano gets back there. So a line drive, but right into the glove of the Cubs left fielder. Wood just does not give you that four seam fastball that you can turn on on two and all. That was 86. And what we're seeing today, a lot of fly ball outs recorded by the left hander, but the A's hitters have had to provide their own power. And unfortunately, not enough power to even make it interesting. Norris had one of the two hits in the second inning for the A's. He was stranded. First pitch just missed outside. Five hits in his last eight at bats for Norris. So one and one is the count. That may have been that. Fastball that Wood doesn't seem to drop into the heart of the plate very often. But that one was a little better pitch to hit for Derek Norris. Kind of a batting practice fastball, though, not really overpowering. He does throw about 91 if he really wants to, but I don't think he wants to. Even that one, just a little on the hands. You know, when he makes a pitch as he just did to Derek Norris, the only thing Derek can do or could do with a pitch is pull a foul, which he did. So you think if Feldman had started the opener of this series in Garza last night and this lefty today, that's a pretty good three rough three man rotation. They can get any run support. So far today, zero for a man who it's a little over three normally. High pop up foul again. Seventy five pitches for Wood with one out in the fifth inning. Nice play. Sometimes you gotta be fortunate. Ball just has to get right to you. And a breaking ball, and Norris swings over top. So a slider down and in, and strikeout number five for Travis Wood. Well, just check the catcher, and that's the back foot. Breaking ball to the back foot. It's a pretty good pitch, especially if you're ahead in the count. And here's Smith. Smith struck out in the second. So a fly ball pitcher today. And a pretty good pitcher's park. So you may say, well, is he a fly ball pitcher? That can't work at Wrigley Field, but a lot of people will tell you that. The wind blows in at Wrigley as much as it blows out. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I've heard that a lot. It's just when it does blow out, that's what people remember because the ball starts sailing. Rizzo backs up, flips to Wood, side retired. 11 in a row retired by Travis Wood.
California is brought to you by GoPro, the world's most versatile camera. GoPro, be a hero. Coast Guard Island right in the middle of our picture. And a glorious day. No score. Top of the sixth inning. So a 4th of July pitcher's duel between Dan Straley and Travis Wood. So Darwin Barney to lead it off. He's the eighth place hitter for the Cubs. First pitch sliders outside. Barney, Castillo, Valbuena. High to left. Cespedes near the line. And that's out on the wall. So Darwin Barney is 0 for 2. Actually, both pitchers, one a lefty, one a righty, kind of doing the same thing. And straight at that time, looked like Barney was going to have a pretty good pitch to hit. But instead, he's kind of a dud. Straight up, not hit very far. So we may consider Dan Straley kind of a crafty right hander. Yeah, with a bit. crafty lefty on the mound for the Cubs. Well, it's working for both of them today as Castillo swings wildly. And there's the numbers. No walks, five strikeouts for Wood, two walks, four strikeouts for Straley. And it's been a little bit of a jam for each of them. And there was a runner thrown out at the plate, and that play starts to look bigger and bigger as the game goes on. Cespedes with a terrific throw to throw up Starlin Castro. Are you going to talk to Castro after the game and ask him why he didn't I'm not. I'm not. I'm catch the plane, right? I'm going to head to the plane and <laughs> let Dale's fame, the manager for the Cubs, figure that one out. Fouled straight back, two and two. Mask and a helmet. How about this one? He's going to get to see Exmo of a ball off the bat. Misses the catcher's mitt. Cronk. Strong neck. Necessary to be a catcher. Two two pitch. Outside corner. Strike three call. And that's out number two. Maybe a gift. And Steele didn't like it. But outside corner, supposed to be inside. Derek uh, Norris, a very good job. And I think just as important Luis for Brian Gorman. And we've often seen catchers have to reach for a ball, but if it's still over the plate, regardless of whether he has to reach, and should be called a strike on that one once. First pitch to Valbuena is way high. Five in a row retired by Straley. Valbuena is 0 for 2 in the game. Dan Straley, two pitches up and out of the strike zone. He is now manicuring the mound. He knows it's stride. If it's correct, he keeps the ball down. When he shortens his stride, gets the pitch up. Again, and we have seen him when he has walked batters. It's usually on four pitches because the stride is shorter. Kurt Young knows that he has a spot that he marks that he goes to, and when he's on that mark, the pitches are down. 3-0 pitches in first strike. It's there somewhere, but with the hot sun, Clay would put a lot of water on this infield, but it dried out quickly. Yeah, and that one just missed outside, so it's a two out walk for the leadoff man. Swing for the fences with the new home run derby mobile game from MLB.com. Available on iPhone and iPad. Download free today. So Castro steps in. The Buena only has one stolen base. He's been thrown out three times.
So Castro steps in. He's hit a fly ball to left field and he walked. Pitch there by Australia got right in on the hands of Castro. Couple of hits last night for Castro. He can pitch to Castro, but as hard as he swings, that's the dangerous part about his approach. Swing hard sometimes to make contact. Other times you take a fastball, you can't reach. But probably to shorten his swing, which he really does not do, depending really on what the count is, it doesn't matter to him. He swings hard. Probably getting inside is is the way to try to get him out. His open stance thing. Anytime a hitter opens and then closes his stance as he does, sometimes cannot catch up. And he waves at a pitch in the dirt. Slowly jogs to first base and he gets <laughs> thrown out. So another strikeout for Straley, his sixth in the game, and he's dealing. We'll be back. July 4th, 1996, here at the Coliseum, Scott Brocious, a walk-off home run in the 11th inning. It was off the Angels' Rich Monteleone. The A's won the game 8-7. Ray, do you remember that? Sure do, just like it was a long time ago. <laughs> 17 years ago. <laughs> yeah, look at Mount Davis being constructed. How about that? <laughs> You're stopped right there, huh? <laughs> Uh, Bottom of the six, no score. Wood and Straley both pitching great. You know, Scott Brocious left the A's and went on to be a star with the Yankees. Yep. I mean, he had some huge home runs in World Series. He hooked up with the Yankees at just the right time. They were in the middle of their terrific run. You know what was great for him is that they wanted him to play third base. He's a tremendous third base, strong arm, accurate, great hands, but put him in the lineup, and all of a sudden he started hitting home runs and contributing, which it's amazing what just playing defense can do to help your offense, especially if that's all they want you for is your defense. But good all round player. Rosales. Chris Lowry here in the sixth inning. He's trying to get something going against Travis Wood. The only threat they've had. Two on, two out in the second inning. And Wood struck out Smith to strand the two runners. Wood has retired 10 in a row. I said 11 in a row. 10 in a row.
reached for. Hit toward Scherholz, who playing shallow again. He's got it. We go from 96 to 2006. Jay Payton, who said, come on, give me some bats. He got more bats than anybody, and that's pretty nice. Walk off. Bobby Crosby scoring the winning run when he pulled over the catch. Remember that. That was a good season, 2006. They were pretty good. Yeah. Peyton was good that year. Won the division and lost to the Tigers. First pitch to Coco Crisp is touch outside. That was pitch number 84 for Wood. He has not walked anybody. He has struck out five. Pitch there. See, like that's an eighty six mile an hour pitch, Ray, and it's not a breaking ball, it's not a change up. Trying to get a hitter to chase a pitch, and that's it. You see it coming out of the hand. You think you have a chance to hit it, just like Rosales protecting with a couple of strikes, but uh, flared one out to right field. Nothing behind it. Coco is grounded out and flied out. Right at the knees on the outside corner, two and two. Coco's two for ten in the series. Castillo went through every pitch. Finally got one. Wood likes It'll pop up to see a hustling that's not going to quite get there. So the count remains two and two. Another foul ball as that one was up and out over the plate a little bit. Coco just six hits in his last 43 at bats. This is what he's like to say. Well, that means there's a hot streak coming. We hope. Julio Borbone moves over into left center field. He's got it for out number two. Did you miss the latest edition of All A's or you just want to watch it again? Be sure to log on to CSNCalifornia.com for all your favorite segments, which are available on demand right now. Go behind the plate during one of A.J. Griffin's bullpen sessions and find out what he focuses on in between starts. CSNCalifornia.com, it's your interactive home for authentic Bay Area sports. Two outs for Lowry, and the first pitch to Lowry drops low. Lowry is 0 for 2. He's hit a pair of fly balls to center field. And they've not really been driven. They just uh, fooled a little bit out on the front foot. And you'd like to see him from the right side maybe get into one, but these are the counts. The more a hitter gets ahead of the cat, the more Travis Wood likes it, just simply because he likes to throw off speed pitches. Well, Lowry does not have a home run as a right handed hitter this year. This is his 106th at bat from the right side.
272 hitter right handed 320 left hand Stride floater catches the outside corner so No home runs Five from the left side Three of them coming in the first week of the season Donaldson would be next if Lowry can get aboard. And it's in the dirt, and Lowry will take the two out walk. First walk issued by Travis Wood. It's back to change up, and that's. A change up that did nothing, and maybe that's something that Chris Bazio, pitching coach, saw that maybe indicated that pitch count's getting a little bit. 96 for that last pitch. It shouldn't be that big of a problem, but it's going to warrant someone getting loose in the bullpen. Matt Guerrero starts to head to the mound. Ball up and away to Donaldson. Donaldson has hit a pair of fly balls to right field today. Two and oh. It's amazing what a, a walk with two outs and bullpen activity will do to yeah. a crowd. Big swing, fouled right side. Gonna fall in front of Orbo. Lowry to third. He'll stop there. A two out rally for the Athletics. Orbo well, looked like he got not necessarily a great jump on the ball and came up short, maybe figuring he did not want to try to make a, a, a play and allow a run for, to score from first base with a couple of outs, but. Josh Donaldson, a couple of balls to the right side, the right field, like you said, this time. Taking the outside pitch and going with it to right center. A good hitter and almost skipped by Bourbon. And they threw the ball back in, airmailed everybody. But he was going to play that on a hop for a single, even though Lowry is able to get to third. So here's Cespedes. Opportunity to grab the lead here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Pitch is hit hard right at the third baseman. Side retire. So the A's strand a pair. Seventh inning coming up. Still scoreless.
the holiday. Our area coverage of today's game brought to you by the Minions flying the Despicable Me and Universal's animated comedy Despicable Me 2. It's in theaters now. Seventh inning from the O.Co. Coliseum. It's a good ball game if you like lots of pitching, and we've seen it today. Scherholz to lead it off for the Cubs. He'll be followed by Soriano and Rizzo against Dan Straley. Well, maybe what Delaire has done in showing the walk-offs in 96 and 06, that maybe it's a walk-off day on July the 4th. Pitch number 81 is in for a strike to Scherholz. Two eighty the average now for Scherholz. And he swung at a pitch that was well out of the strike zone. Skies one foul territory. Chris Young goes into a slide. He got a glove on it and it popped out. Right between the pitcher's mound and home plate in the bullpen. A long run for Chris Young. But going into the slide, and by going to the slide, it looked like all he had to do is keep his feet, reach out, and make the play. But by going to the slide, well, you're taking a whole lot of body and moving it. That by going to the slide, and you know, it's not like he was getting close to the rail to where he had to, to slide to avoid making contact with the sidewall. Shallow center. Going out is Lowry. He makes the catch. One out here in the top of the seventh inning. Now batting, number 12, Alfonso Soriano. So Soriano hits. And I think Travis Wood is finished for the day as right hander gets loose, as typically with one out, reliever would get loose if he's coming into the game. If that's still Guerrero, then we shall see. But Swing and a miss. Fastball that had some cut to it. That's a hitter who said, forget about pitcher's duel. He was yeah. trying to make it a one to nothing game. Cap toward Rosales, who's got it. Two outs. Cap right there is a great example of what. You try to do it for a hitter who's trying to pull. Well, cut a little bit to the outside part of the plate. Dan Stray threw it perfectly in. Watch what Soriano does. Watch him open up. That's your typical roll over there. He can do nothing with the ball once he makes the commitment except roll over with his top hand. Easy ground ball. And you get a power hitter out. But you have to appreciate it that he was trying to hit a home run. But Straley, maybe you recognize it after the first offering and try to get him to chase, and he did. Swing and a miss. So Rizzo trying to give the Cubs the lead. He's walked and struck out. Drive to center. Crisp is there. And Straley rolls along. Three up, three down inning. So we have reached the Seventh inning stretch from the Odatco Coliseum. Cubs nothing, A's nothing, and we're going to keep it right here on the 4th of July. You please rise and join the singing of God Bless America, performed by Dan Fingers Rodowitz.
for the Bay Area fan. Go deep with Sportsnet Central. It's brought to you by AT&T Uverse, and it's this evening at 6 p.m. It's over on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Full highlights and clubhouse reaction of our game here today at the Coliseum. 30 A's in 30 days. We're going to look at Ryan Cook and Joy Chestnut's Hot Dog Quest. Henry Wolford and Mindy Bach will host. Beautiful day at the ballpark. No score. Bottom of the seventh inning, and the Cubs have gone to the bullpen. When a guy throws six shutout innings, the A's are probably fine with that. It's going to be Matt Guerrero when it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change, tune up, and smog experts. So Guerrero's numbers with the Dodgers. This is his first appearance in a Cubs uniform. He came over in a trade a couple days ago. Matt Guerrero. And with the righty in the bullpen, that means that Brandon Moss knew he's going to have to get a bat, try to get something started in the seventh inning. Into the hold up there. So Fryman was one for two in his at bats. Strong swing that stopped just in enough time. High pop up left side of the diamond. A little bit of a sun issue. Castro looks like he's got it all the way, and he does. Valbuena, the third baseman, he was bailing out a little bit. So Moss is retired. He'll stay in the game at first base. Bartolo Colon pitched well last night, but came up on the losing end. Talk about Travis Wood, lack of run support. Bartolo Colon got zero last night, got one run. That was it. Young lines one, left field, the base hit. Soriano gets to it quickly. And a nice play by Soriano on left field to keep Young to a single. Well, a very nice job of hitting. As the ball just. Kept going away from him, and he was able to hook it down in the corner. But you're right about Soriano. Not only did they get to the ball, but he has a very strong arm getting the ball back in. So here's Norris. Norris, a base hit and a strikeout. On the outside corner a strike. Young has a good lead at first. Does have the ability to steal a bag. He's six for seven in steals this year. But it is a different story now with the right hander as opposed to Travis Wood, who very stingy when it came to allowing base stealers, although this year a little bit different, but he's a few base runners when they did get on, did not attempt. Blocked by Castillo, the catcher. Late innings of a 0 0 game. So Travis Wood gave up just three hits. One walk, five strikeouts. And he stranded four base runners against. They had two scoring opportunities in the second and then in the sixth. Not get a run home against Wood. 
No run support again for the Cubs left-hander. Ryan Cook is throwing in the A's bullpen, just started throwing. Blocked again. So the count now two and one to Norris. If you mention it, but with Straley being called up, Stephen Vogt was sent back to. Triple A Sacramento, the catcher. Didn't get to make a road trip because he came up to the beginning of this home stand with the off days, but got his first major league hit, a home run, which was big. Runner goes, pitches a ball, throw to second base is in time. So Castilla. Shows off a pretty strong arm and he throws out Chris Young at second base. Well, the quickness in which he got rid of the ball helped and footwork was great. Now the key right there and just watching Chris Young looking back there was not a swing but he was looking back which would indicate a hit and run. And a very good throw and a good tag. So I would think somebody missed a sign. Otherwise, if you're stealing a base, you're going to run head down. If there's contact, then you find the baseball, especially less than two outs. Swing and a miss on a 3 1 slider. Well, Castro taking the throw in front of the bag and. There's your front foot, Kay. We're yeah. going with the slide and going back with the front foot. Comes like Castillo. You can see why with that throw. And the pitch a bit high, and it's a two-out walk. So Norris is aboard, and here's Seth Smith. Smith is struck out and he has grounded out. Pitch is down and away. I think Seth Smith doesn't have to see Travis Wood in the clubhouse. Yep, I agree. Seeing Matt Guerrier. Just the fact that Guerrier is thrown from the right side, that's enough to please Seth Smith. That one's hit hard. Base hit right field. Norris is going to round second. He's going to go to third, and it's another two out rally for the A's. Now, Seth Smith, a high fastball after a pretty good two seamer down and away that he took, and then got the fastball. Not a top spin on the hit past the second baseman, Barney. And Adam Rosales being called back. It's going to be Eric Sogard. Derek Norris taking third base, and well, you don't ever want to see a, a runner stop because the throw is going to come back into second. Might as well get the third base. So Sogard's going to hit for Rosales. So, got to hustle up and get Derek Power out. <laughs> okay, Castillo. Blocked a couple of low pitches in the dirt to uh, Derek Norris. And now runner at third base. Well, they try to elevate the pitch and not have to be concerned about his catcher blocking ball. See what Guerrero does. First pitch is a strike to Sogard. Sogard, as a pinch hitter this year, is 0 for 6, and he will, of course, stay in the game. 
257 the average overall. And that one to the backstop, and the A's are going to get the lead. It was a swing and a miss. Norris scores, 1-0 Athletics. And the reaction by Castillo, he did not know the ball had come back to him. But Derek Norris, fortunately, coming down the line, but a ball right, actually, it might have been a pass ball, but by the time he turned around, and then you got to throw the ball to your pitcher who's covering. But he just missed it and then got the ball coming back and he had no chance to try to make the tag. So there is the importance of a runner first to third get to third a mistake helps the A's score a run. Sogar takes outside. Well you hear the clank of the backdrop signage but Derek Norris very aggressively coming down the line. And the importance there is taking the extra lead. Dan Strader, the pitcher of record. He's very happy that a runner scored. Because Ryan Cook looks like he's going to come in the eighth inning. I think Castile just missed it. Looked like he might have even been crossed up, but you wouldn't think that would be the case. Maybe just a lot of movement on the pitch. But there's not a runner in second. But he just went after the ball late, so he blocked two very well. But the one that he should have, he didn't. And now it's three and two. The catcher giving him a pass ball on the play, and probably a very good call. So the two out walk to Derek Norris on a three two slider from Guerrero. Assessment base hit, first and third. And Trying to add on. And it's a walk. We're not close. So two on, two out. The only hit he gave up was to Soriano that Cespedes threw out Castro. So great performance by Dan Straley. Basio, the pitching coach, coming out. Pedro Strope starts to throw. Basio from up in the Sacramento area, along with Dale Swaim over Pinot. I would not say this is a particularly great outing for a relief pitcher making his debut no. with a new team. Two hits, two walks. He got help on a caught stealing. He did not get help on a pass ball. Now batting, center fielder, number four, Coco Chris. So we've seen this before, Ray, where he's playing a team that 10 games under 500. And over the course of a series, the other teams makes more mistakes than the A's do. Yeah. Remember the drop fly ball on game one of the series, two unearned runs, A's win by a run. And Couple of mistakes by the Cubs today. A's the good team that they are, just take advantage of it. There's a strike to Coco Crisp, and the count is quickly 0 and 2. I think the amazing thing is sometimes what a catcher does when does a good job to prevent a runner from advancing but when it gets to third base and especially with pass ball if it's a wild pitch it's one thing but pass ball it's that's all of a catch mm -hmm. unearned run but A's will take it and Cubs don't care whether it's a runner unearned or, or earned it's a run then A's will take it. Coco doing his best not to swing and he got away with one maybe by walking across the plate help.
Cook goes 0 for 3. You know, just thinking about Guerrero, hit fits as his first appearance with the Cubs. Now Castillo, the catcher, who knows how much he's caught it. Sure. And just thinking about that. And, in a movement on the pitch, and while it wouldn't have been a cross up, but it looked like he was fooled by the movement, and maybe that's simply catching the guy for the first time. And there's a line drive into the glove of uh, Buena. He makes a nice play. So that's how the seventh inning comes to an end, but the A's get a run and a pass ball. One nothing athletics after seven. I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. When you look around, wouldn't you consider it privilege to associate yourself with such a fine-looking man as is standing in uniform in this ballpark today? And I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. About one of the great sports speeches of all time, Lou Gehrig, back in 1939 on the 4th of July. The Iron Man, the Iron Horse, and 2,130 games consecutively played. Hmm. It's interesting that that speech was actually quite a bit longer, but some of the recording was ruined or lost, and what you hear is all that was. I guess saved as far as the recording goes. It was a they saved the best speech. <laughs> they say, definitely saved the best. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog experts. So Ryan Cook takes over here in the eighth inning. He's now with a one to nothing lead. Navarro, Bourbon, Barney against Cook. I think the biggest thing about uh, the Iron Horse and his games played is the fact. That Wally Pipp's name will always be yeah. forever remembered because it was Wally Pipp who came out of a game and never got back in, at least uh, not with Lou Gehrig because he played in 2,130. Only Cal Ripken Jr. has played more. And he did it, and a record that nobody will ever pass 26 32. Yeah, I'm sure. Cal Ripken Jr. said, Lou Gehrig probably felt the same way. There are people who go to work every day. And players, baseball players, get a chance to play baseball every day. So why is it considered work? And it is. Whoa! And somehow Cook caught it. That's work. And he lost his hat. Wow. 
held on to the baseball. Travis Wood caught one off the bat of Nate Fryman. Derek Norris going to go out and ask him where his heart is because this ball was right up the middle. He reached up. That's a base hit. Rob by Ryan Cook. Throw the glove up, get the head out of the way, and get a snow cone. And the cap is gone. Nothing except the best part about that is this catcher went out to at least give him a chance to catch his breath. That is scary. Made a great play, but very scary. So one out. So there are your changes with Lowry sliding over to short and Sogard staying in the game at second base. And of course, Moss in at first as well. So Donaldson, Lowry, Sogard, Moss are your is your infield third to first. Timeout is being called. We're looking why there's a baseball behind Chris Young. Now we can play baseball again. <laughs> one and zero to Borbone, his second at bat, and he chops one. Sogard has it, two outs. So Cook retires the first two, and that'll bring up Darwin Barney. Now okay. number 15, Darwin Barney. Barney, a ground out and a fly out. Pitch is in for a strike. So Barney and Castro, young middle infielders for the Cubs. Cubs like them a lot. But this year, both guys struggling offensively. Castro hitting 235, Barney hitting 227. That's coming into today. And he pops it up. Sogard fighting that sun. And Cook has a three up, three down inning. Bottom of the eighth coming up. One nothing, Athletic. Here's our game summary. It's brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Pitching duel between Travis Wood and Dan Straley today. Wood went six shutout innings, gave up just three hits. And
Straley was just as good, if not better. Straley went seven innings, gave up just one hit, three walks, six strikeouts. And Straley stayed in long enough to maybe get himself win because of this. That's how the A scored their only run. It was on a pass ball past the catcher, Wellington Castillo. Norris would score. And it is one to nothing. Just one hit for the Cubs. Oh, one and oh. And for the A's, one five and oh. Kind of, I think what Dan Straley did today was what the A's had hoped. I don't think there was any doubt in Dan Straley's mind that he was going to do what he did. But to go out and actually do it on a special day, try to win the series, the A's three outs away from doing that. And Dan Strader did his job for seven innings. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change in Tune Up, your oil change tune up, and smog experts. So Pedro Strope comes in. This is his first appearance as a member of the Chicago Cubs, just acquired in a trade. He was part of the Scott Feldman deal. First pitch is a strike. Strope has a very good arm. And it's interesting, right? He was not having a very good year this year with the Baltimore Orioles. Mm. But last year, he was very good. Yes, he he was. was a huge part of that Orioles bullpen. He was 5 and 2 with a 2.44 ERA in 70 games. Yeah. So this is a good arm. But he could not repeat his. Success from last year. But you know, that's probably the kind of guy you try to get in a trade, you know? Guy who has had success, exactly. still young. Yeah, he knows what to do, how yeah. to get the job done. And he gets Jed Lowry for out number one. I think Jed thought the ball hit off his foot because yeah. he stopped running. Yeah, he is coming back and okay. surprised right. he ran as far as he did because he was looking back all the while and then. Usually when that happens, the hitter will stop at the plate. Bob Melvin was ready to come out. Now Dale yeah, Swain's going to ask about it. Well, I think, I think Dale Swain's point is, well, why didn't you, exactly. why did the play, Divide. why did you allow the play yeah. to be completed yeah. without saying anything? Let's see. And that hit nothing. nothing. That's a ground out, folks. So the A's catch a break. They didn't go straight down. Is, is who, who, who made the call that it hit right. him? What umpire made the call? And unless unless Gorman said something, uh, you start pointing your fingers. If you haven't been ejected yet, you're gone. Was time out oh, time? Call. Call. Is that a possibility? That, that must okay. have been it. Yeah. Because, yeah, that had to be it because that yeah, could not have been a dead ball. Him, yeah. So maybe timeout was called. See if Lowry calls time is granted by the home plate umpire. Oh, it's a quick pitch. Well, but the umpire did something. He put his hand up. Yeah. And maybe, well, you can't really quick pitch. Off I was going to say, out, out, little, yeah, with nobody on base. pitch against yeah. the rules. Yeah, you're right because Chad Bradford was one of the best at doing that. But he put the umpire put his hand up for some reason, and he may have. Did, Lowry may have heard something verbally. I, I don't know. Who knows? But did Lowry verbally ask for time? <laughs> Slow it down a little bit. So he he called the ball, and he called it based on the pitch. So the pitcher doing what he did. Yeah. He called it before the ball got to play. Now, you know, a pitcher really is allowed to do anything without a runner on base. He doesn't have to come to a stop because Chad Bradford was one of the best at being down in a in a set position, and then they just throw from yeah. down under, and hitters were never ready. That one's driven to right center, and that's it a long way. Borbone on the move, and he makes the catch. Stayed up too long. Too long. Great swing. The ball just not carrying. It's daytime. 
And ball still not carrying, although maybe with two strikes didn't hit it well enough. And that, that he, he hit it well enough. That says it all. Yeah. That says it all. So here's Donaldson. Swing and a miss on a slider. All right, the guys in the truck doing a little rule book homework. It's technically not a balk because there's nobody right. on base. So the penalty is a ball. Whatever the pitcher did wrong. A quick pitch. I mean, if. Because if, if we see it again, you'll see that he just stood there and then threw without winding up, without doing anything. Now, actually, he pitches out of the stretch with nobody on base, but he came straight up and just threw. Mm -hmm. And Brian Gorman saw it immediately. And, you know, maybe because this is the way he normally sets. So you. But what's it, it's the first pitch to Lowry, so he really has not. I watch him come straight up and throw without coming to a set. So yeah. the penalty is a ball. Yeah. If there was a runner on first, the penalty would be it would be then a balk. Runner would get second base. But you know, they did it again. That's yes, the same thing. Yep. Stroke off the mound, throws in time. But you're right. That's it. Josh Donaldson looking back. He's sick. sick yeah. there. Ace Baseball and Comcast Sports in California brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. Red, white, and you Jeep giveaway. Visit CashCreek.com for details. Yeah, he's did the same thing that he did to Larry. He comes, and Donaldson trying to get set, and he That's threw. That's the exact same exactly. thing. Exactly. And see a check swing, and Donaldson, you know, why would you call it once? Chef Rodney does the same thing with the Rays. Yeah. You know? He does the same thing. But if you call it the hitter before. Yeah. You have to call it on the next <laughs> inning. But Brian Gorman did not for reasons that only he knows. Maybe because he established it the first time and was allowed to do it the second time because that's part of his, his wind up or his quick pitching or whatever. But that was strange that it was called once but not the other. That one rolled foul. And you know what? He's done it once to each hitter. We'll see if he does it <laughs> to Cespedes. Now he's thinking, you know what? Maybe I can get away with it. Cespedes is 0 for 3. And he has struck out twice and grounded out. He grounded out with runners at. First and third and two outs in the sixth inning. And this one's popped up. Barney shading his eyes with his throwing hand and that will do it three up three down inning for Pedro Strope. Grant Balfour is coming in another save opportunity one nothing A's.
on Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Xfinity, home of the most live sports, and by Toyota. Do the math and save at your local Toyota dealer. Time now for the AT&T U-verse rewind. Big play in the game. Watch Cespedes' throw to the plate. And Starlin Castro, no chance. It'd have been better suited to run over yeah. Derek Norris instead of trying to go around him because Derek Norris caught it and really reaching up to catch the ball and then applying the tag. But that was an outstanding throw. But got your point well taken. Why did he stop halfway to third base? Why did he slow down? It, it helped Cespedes, it helped the A's, and that's the game. So the A's with a one nothing lead and Balfour comes in. But it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and spawn experts. So Balfour looking for his 21st save trying to get straight a win. He's also looking for their seventh shutout this year. It'll be Wellington Castillo, Luis Valbuena, Starlin Castro. If anybody were to get on, Sherholz would hit. Uh, first, first pitch is a breaking ball that stays outside. Balfour got the save. In game one of the series on Tuesday night. Gave up a walk, had a strikeout. Nothing else. Castilla has struck out twice, both times looking. I mean, he had a big rip, fouls it straight back, one and one. And one thing Balfour is doing. He has the good curveball that he'll throw, but he's also getting rounded a little bit on the side to flatten it out almost like a slider. A little bit more of a control pitch, especially to the lefties, but since this is a right handed hitter trying to go right after. Him. One one pitch, fouled straight back, and now it's one and two. So Straley for seven. Cook had a perfect eight. Balfour trying to wrap it up here in the ninth. Threw him a first pitch breaking ball out of the strike zone and threw fastballs right by him too that he fouled off and went upstairs a little bit more on the one two and there's a high fastball. Looks good. Tough to hit. Very tough to hit. Had he made contact, probably would have hurt his back more or broken the bat. Here's the leadoff man, Valbuena. Breaking ball, first strike. Valbuena is 0 for 2. He walked in the sixth inning. Good breaking ball, but a touch low, and the count is even at one and one. And the Cubs wrapping up a long road trip. He's wrapping up a long homestand. These will head to Kansas City. 
Royals won today 10 to 7 over the Indians. They came back from a large deficit in that game. Two and one to Valbuena with Castro waiting in the on deck circle. Foul back. And now it's even at two and two. Yeah, if nothing else today, maybe Grant Balfour is learning one thing. He's got a great fastball. Overpowering. And he really knows it because he can go to it, especially in case where a hitter is ahead of the count. Ball is a bit high. Three and two. No margin for error with the score one nothing. I mean, he's talking to himself. That's good. So now a full count to Valbuena. And the Cubs have just one hit this afternoon. It was a single in the fourth inning. And that one bounced to second. Sogard has it. Out number two. Well, it's great to have a fastball you can challenge somebody, especially it was two and one, then three and two, and just a routine ground ball. Not for right now getting sight because a one run save is really special. And that's just a four seam right over the top. And Valbuena, while he at least loaded up to be able to probably look for and hit a fastball, still could not drive it. Pitch to Castro's in the dirt. Castro for two with a walk. Holes would be next. Two old pitch, low three and oh. Castro does not walk a lot. He's only walked 14 times this year. It makes you wonder if he would be given the green light 3 0. Sometimes a, a pitcher 3 0 would just guide a fastball into the strike zone, which makes it a pretty hittable pitch. And it is a strike called on the inside corner. I don't know if there's ever th a certain thing about framing a pitch. Derek Norris did it to perfection. Watching reach up, <laughs> kind of cradle it back in towards the strike zone. <laughs> yep, that was Three a front. That was a front. And there's a line drive base hit right center field. So Castro has his first hit. That's just the second hit for the Cubs. And here comes Scherholz. Well, there's 3-0 was up and in. 
for a strike and then the fastball down away. Maybe it was the best pitch he threw in the at bat. If he'd thrown it earlier, might have helped him get Castro out. Well, Sherhorst did a fastball, and I remember that specifically. He missed location. It was supposed to be down and away. He overthrew it. It went down and in, and ended up down the right field line. Typical left-handed hitters like the fastball down and in, or down in general. Sherhorst has lined out, grounded out, and popped out, hitting in the third spot. To Schurls is high. Schurls with 11 home runs this year, 34 RBIs. Field very, very deep, especially young in right field, and that one is in for a strike. Well, it looked like maybe Sherholtz was taken all the way because that's a pretty good pitch to hit. Now, fair try to prevent a double by playing deep, but well, it might not have been, been a pitch that he thought about trying to pull for a home run, at least to drive the ball at the opposite field. Outside corner, Sherholz doesn't agree, and the count is one and two. Well, unless he overthrows, I would be surprised if he goes back inside and just stay out there, and especially to get a call like that. George Short. Lowry has it. Throws, throws high, and Sherholz is safe. So it'll be an E6. And Kipe, that happened because Sogard was playing Sherholz to pull. Ideally, look where he's playing. He's going to the bag, but would he have gotten there in time? Probably not. And Lowry, in the same motion, looked. And threw it to first base, but didn't really throw it, kind of guided it and got under it and threw it up. And did he get it? I think he did. As his foot was coming down, maybe before, but Sogard not in the picture, and that's why Lowry had to go to first base. The tag, he's out. He was out. He's out by the stride. And that's Manny Gonzalez. Did not get the call correctly. And. You know it's it's not a ball in glove foot on the bag. It's jumping up and a tag to the body. And. He missed it. It's close but he missed it. And the worst guy you could think about to come up. He's up now. And that would be Alfonso Soriano one for three with a single in the fourth inning. That ball's in the dirt. Castro at second, Sherholz at first. And another breaking pitch that Derek Norris and this keeps the runners at first and second, keeps the force in play, and does not put two runners in scoring position.
fastball is high. Castro was thrown out at home trying to score. He's the runner at second. Scherholz is very fast. He's the runner at first. Two and on the count to Soriano. He's got 10 home runs on the year. Swing and a miss. High fastball is away, and he's got the one swing, and that is the hook swing. Drop and drive. To right field, shallow young coming in, and he's got it, and that's the game. So Balfour has to work for it, but he gets the save, and the A's get the series win, and they wrap up the eight-game homestand with a six and two record. So it's on the road to Kansas City and Pittsburgh, and the A's will do that as a first-place team. One to nothing is the final this afternoon. The A's over the Chicago Cubs. You've been watching A's baseball on Comcast Sportsnet California. Don't go away. A's post-game live with Chris Townsend and Biff Roberts starts right now.